For Morningstar, I'm Jeremy Glazer. After fairly weak GDP data, the market is very interested in the jobs report. I'm here with Bob Johnson. He's our director of economic analysis for a preview of that Friday report. Bob, thanks for joining me. Great to be here today. Uh, so after that softer GDP data, uh, all eyes are on Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the GDP data has been exceptionally volatile quarter to quarter lately. And employment has actually provided a better indication of where the economy is at. It's had a relatively uh, steady growth rate, although a slightly uh, slowing one recently. But uh, with that weak GDP data, people will be looking to the employment data to see if it confirms weakness in the economy. But we do have some hints that uh, it does seem like it hasn't fallen off a cliff from ADP and others. Uh, what did ADP say? Yeah. Uh, ADP showed that uh, we grew uh, about 180,000 jobs in the month of July. So that's about uh, uh, just a little under the long-term average of about 240,000 uh, payroll jobs that we've seen over the last 12 months. Uh, so a decent number, uh, certainly not uh, a single-digit number or anything like that. So kind of a, a very steady-state uh, number. So what's the market expecting uh, in the official report? Uh, very similar. Even before the ADP report, they were thinking about 185,000. So uh, the two numbers are, are in very close alignment. And given that the unemployment claims have been relatively stable uh, and some of the uh, PMI data has looked a little better, uh, it, it seems to us that that's a pretty reasonable guess. Uh, at 185,000 jobs. When you look at that ADP number, is there anything about uh, sectors or size of businesses that kind of jump out at you that, that make you a little bit concerned? Or No, actually, it's on the other side. I think it's a little bit more positive. Uh, this time, the job growth is a little bit more balanced between small, medium, and large, with all contributing at about the same size uh, number of jobs. And, you know, we get very uncomfortable when small businesses are doing all the growing and the big businesses that can see more of the data uh, are doing badly. And this time there was a much more even spread, uh, which we really like to see. And then in terms of sectors, I know there'd been some weakness in manufacturing, construction. Uh, did that trend continue? Well, you know, still in the goods, we were down just a little bit, but it wasn't the, the double barrel thing where we had poor manufacturing and more construction, which was what the ADP report showed last month. Uh, so this month, uh, it was it was just a small job loss uh, on the construction side. So uh, certainly some of the bleeding from the ADP side uh, uh, has stopped. And so that's good news and I think uh, could bode well for Friday's report. So this is an important report, uh, but you say we should be a little bit cautious about ever reading too much into a single month's number. Yep. I mean, any, any given month, the, the statisticians will tell you uh, if the number is, is 180, that it could really be 80 or it could be reported as 280. It, there's enough statistical room in there to drive a truck through that it's better to look at the data on a year-over-year -year basis. And there we expect just a little bit of a slowing in the year-over-year -year growth rate there, uh, to just below 2%. So if expectations that jobs growth will remain steady, uh, when we look at other parts of the economy, uh, things like autos uh, looked like we might be plateauing there? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we talked about the autos, and maybe we were a little premature a year ago saying that, that we thought that industry was plateauing, but uh, it clearly has now. The, jobs, or the uh, uh, auto sales numbers for July were, were pretty much flat with July of a year ago, despite uh, some heftier incentives. Uh, even if you look at the full seven months of the year, uh, maybe we're up 1% year over year versus we've typically seen something closer to 5%. So clearly that's going to have a negative impact on GDP that we're going to have to make up somewhere. But, but uh, uh, there's clearly an issue on, in uh, the auto sector where we've got some saturation issues. We're kind of back to our old highs in terms of production and uh, cars are lasting longer. And so I think uh, it's going to be hard to get a lot of juice out of that sector anymore. We're going to have to find something else to get a little juice out of. And finally, could we take a brief look at what's happening outside the United States? Uh, are there signs that the rest of the global economy is holding up? You know, despite Brexit, there were some, uh, some surprisingly positive numbers overseas, particularly in China, uh, where we saw their PMI number cross back over 50 again. First time it's been over 50. That separates growth uh, from decline. Uh, first time since February of 2015. So that was certainly uh, a positive number there. It was uh, rather broad based in terms of orders uh, and, and uh, current production. So that was all great news there. And so that's a positive sign uh, for, for a country that's seen its manufacturing index go down for some time. 
uh, to move back in the other direction. And, and we're surprised the markets haven't perhaps acted more positively relative to that announcement. And even in Europe, the data was still pretty high. It was off from a real, uh, abnormally strong June, but it, it's still at 52. It was well above 50. And so it kind of goes to show, despite the Brexit, this is the data that comes after all of that, that people are still uh, hanging in there and, and not packing just yet. Bob, thanks for the update today. Thank you. For Morningstar, I'm Jeremy Glazer. Thanks for watching.